listening. Tonight, I'm testing Copic markers on vellum paper. And the sort of vellum I'm using is like scrapbooking vellum. And I got it at my local Michaels. I've seen other artists and creators work on vellum. And I wanted to see how it worked for illustration. Um, I had totally meant to do a dual camera setup. And I probably will. <laughs> I just just realized now that I meant to do that and I didn't. So um, I've already got my colors swatched out these and these and they're laid out in color families sort of in the order I intend on using them so I'm going to go ahead and get started okay so I think I've got everything set up my secondary camera is going I thought this would be a great opportunity to try out another um, sort of camera angle camera technique and with the vellum I, ooh, you can like barely see anything on there. It is so transparent. I had gone ahead and I bought like two sheets of vellum. Um, they were 12 by 12 and I went and cut them down using a paper trimmer into something that's uh, more usable in my studio. So if you feel sort of puzzled by those big sheets that is totally an option for you. And um, Copic markers, any alcohol marker really, is supposed to dry very quickly. And on the vellum, they're not. They take a little bit longer to dry. And I'm having some difficulty seeing what I put down. Almost reminiscent of using that light table. And vellum isn't a very absorbent paper, so your color is going to sit on top. So I've got my first layer, a very pale E double, double zero, which is skin white. And now I'm going over with it, over it with milky white. Actually, maybe I should see if it'll layer. And it doesn't really layer it just kind of replaces the previous layer. So you can't really build up layers of color on vellum, which will probably be an issue. And um, I have my line art underneath the vellum on a separate sheet of paper. Um, you guys have seen me do this technique a couple of times. And the reason I did that is I assumed that given the properties of both alcohol markers and of vellum's non-absorbent surface, it would I'd have issues with the ink becoming reactivated. So I wanted to uh, lessen the chances of it smearing all over the place if possible. So I'm going over this with E51 Milky White and I'm not really getting much changing color or much um, build up. It's all just sort of sitting on the surface of the paper. And that actually makes it very difficult to see where I've applied color. And um, I recommend you let your layers dry as much as possible. And they will be kind of tacky, that's the various ink. And as you can see, this very light pink, which is a Blick color, 094 shell, um, it's actually removing the Copic I put down. So there's no blending going on whatsoever. It is pretty much just replacing prior layers not even really layering on top of each other. So if you're like me and you like uh, lots of layers that influence each other, vellum is not a good choice for you. And I think you can see that it is streaky a little bit. Not not a favorite for me. In fact, I may have to swatch some different skin tones because I'm just not getting enough contrast between the layers. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, you want to be conscious of the direction you make strokes because it will show up on your paper. It doesn't just sort of feather out the way it would on a more absorbent marker paper. And um, vellum isn't really a marker paper to begin with. It's just a paper you can use with markers if you so choose. I think it's more valued for its transparent properties than it really is for um, its ability to play well with other media. Now, if you were trying to do like a stained glass kind of effect, I think uh, vellum might be an excellent choice. The problem you would face would be filling in large areas without much streaking. And I'm already getting areas where the alcohol ink has built up. So it's going to be a little more, um, more saturated color than the areas where it does not build up. It is kind of an interesting effect though. It's a neat paper to play around with as long as you are okay with what you get. It reminds me a bit of rendering on Yupo and I actually have some transparent Yupo that I plan on testing and reporting on as well. So if you're curious about uh, rendering on Yupo, you should keep watching this channel. No, I have there we go. There's the darker. Darker pink I was looking for. Might not actually be dark enough to make a difference. Doesn't seem like it is. It's kind of hard to give you guys an accurate look at what this looks like. Now, letting it, allowing it to dry will let you lie, ugh, can't talk tonight, will allow you to layer it slightly. So um, if there are other areas you can work and then come back to that first area, that's a good way to sort of build up colors. And it seems like your colors are going to be a little lighter than they swatch on other papers. I think you want to avoid overworking vellum because it can't really stand it. So you want to keep your layers to a minimum. You want to keep your corrections to a minimum. I could see uh, using colorless blender on this only to pick things up. I don't think it will help much. I might have to go as dark as walnut for freckles. Let those layers dry. I can also see this surface attracting a lot of dust because um, Ver Copic Various ink tends to dry kind of sticky. see as I'm layering it on here I'm getting kind of rough sort of pools so that's another something you want to be aware of it might affect how you go about rendering it might affect how you feel about what you render it's important to keep in mind though that if you're not using the right tools um, you may end up getting results you just like and um, try not to take that too personally. Just try to change your materials before you feel discouraged. There is a popular phrase, it's a poor artist who blames his tools. But if you are using the wrong tools for the job, of course, it's not going to turn out the way you wanted. You're not going to use an ice cream spade to carve marble, for example. And just because somebody can make something work for them, it doesn't mean you're less of an artist if it 
doesn't work for you. And it's also good to take the time to play around with things and to figure things out and to learn how the material handles before you get invested in a larger piece. See, my various ink is already tacky. And I'm not really getting much of a darker color with this application, although on my swatch sheet, it was a lot darker and it's looking a lot more purple on the vellum than it did on the swatch sheet. That's an area I kind of messed up. I can kind of go into it with the previous color and smooth things out a bit. Although I think the more layers you put down, the more precise you're going to have to be because you're going to get a lot more streaking. And you're not as able to sort of blend things out. You can see how how all the brush strokes are still very visible on the skirt. And it seems like my attempts at blending them out are not working so well. So that is something to keep in mind when you're using vellum. Is you might get harsh lines. So you would want to be very careful on areas like the face where I do actually have some lines. So I think once you get those lines on there, they're there. You can't, can't easily blend them out the way you would. On a different type of paper. But if you have experience illustrating on vellum and you have some pointers that I am missing out on, I would love it if you let me know because I am always looking to grow and learn. See that brown? This brown is like the best color so far on this paper. The upside is I haven't had to pull out a light box. Now in the zoom in cam, you can really see the streaks on her dress if you couldn't see them before. And I did try to blend them out and I didn't really have much success. Her skin has probably dried enough that I can try to go back and add some slightly darker freckles using Blix Walnut. And just show up a little bit better than the other color I was using, other two colors I was using. And if you're like me, you want to be careful not to drag your hand because it will pick up ink and smear it. I'm using the walnut now to go back and add some shadows in areas where I had trouble doing so before. Because it seems like it's dark enough that it will sort of do that for me. And this poor skirt is really just a hot mess. I might just move on from it. Because I don't think it's going to get any better. Ah, finally, I got a color dark enough that it'll actually stand out as a shadow on the dress. So maybe if you're swatching, I mean, if you're going to be rendering on vellum, you should do your swatches on vellum and you should do your swatches by layering the colors you were thinking about building up on. Although you might end up with a muddy mess, just like what I've got going on right here. Well, this brown isn't going to be dark enough. So I've got to find one a lot darker. Fingers crossed. There we go, yeah. That's dark enough. And when you have too many layers it, on vellum, it actually starts to feel kind of muddy. 
uh, kind of thick when you're applying your alcohol ink. And that's because it's built up on the paper instead of soaking into the paper. And it seems like three, maybe four layers is about as much as you want to do. If you can help it. Of course, this is going to be all over the place when I scan it. It's going to be annoying to sew back together. So we're nearing the finish line, at least of this piece. And uh, the various ink really reflects um, the light a lot. So it actually is making it hard for one of my cameras to properly pick up the image. And it makes it a little difficult for me to see. I think the only way I'm gonna really know how this is how this will turn out is uh, after I have scanned both halves and assembled them in Photoshop, which is what I've been doing for these um, sort of like two layer marker renders. I think this is probably a pretty abnormal rendering method for most people. Most people do everything on one layer, and in general, I do too. It's just with these kind of specialty papers that I'm still finagling. I don't want to contend, I don't want to have to contend with ink smearing all over the place in addition to whatever other issues um, I might face. So I'm just trying to make everything as easy for myself as I can, limit the number of variables that can go wrong. I should hold off on that and maybe do one more layer on the yellow. I will say that for better or for worse, this is going to look a lot different than anything else I do in markers. It's probably going to look very similar to the um, pigment marker test, pigment marker paper test. Wow, oh, what a mouthful. I did not too long ago, and that's because with both papers, the ink sits on top rather than soaking in. So, so uh, vellum might be a good choice for your pigment markers. Gonna have to go back and test that before I can really give you guys any sort of a recommendation. This red might not be different enough. paper also has a tendency to kip up and buckle a little bit as more layers of ink are applied. So you might want to use your fingertip to just kind of push it back in. Make sure things are as lined up as possible. I have a, f I have a feeling things have shifted a lot while I was working on this. And there's not really a whole lot I can do about that. See this very dark red garnet? It's uh, not even putting down color. All right, so that was my marker test on uh, vellum with alcohol-based markers. Actually, let's see how it looks not attached. So that looks, that looks kind of neat. I like markering on tracing paper too, and I'll be doing a video on that later on. Um, I hope you guys found this useful. I hope it provided you with information that will better your own uh, coloring abilities. Uh, I'm Becca Hilburn. I hope you guys have a great evening. If you like this video, make sure you hit like and consider subscribing to my channel because I'm going to be doing many more paper tests with a variety of markers and a variety of papers. Have a good evening, guys. Bye.